So this is the Cary Eclipse fluorescence spectrometer. The sample compartment is here. To turn on the fluorescence spectrometer, you simply flip the switch on the front of the instrument. Once that's on, you can start the software. Uh, there are a number of different programs that you can run on this instrument. The main one that we tend to use in analytical is SCAN. There's also Simple Reads, we use that a little bit. You could do some kinetics. Um, and there's something called concentration. I believe this is making a calibration curve. So the main uh, software that we're going to use is SCAN. Let's double click that. And you're going to want to make sure that up in this top left corner, the software notification switches from offline to online. If it's offline, chances are you forgot to turn the instrument on or there's some communication issue and, and let someone know at that pace at, at that time. So you can click setup. And this is where you can play with some of the parameters for an emission scan where we uh, excite a sample or molecule at a particular wavelength and then scan a range of wavelengths and collect the emission spectrum. You can also do an excitation scan where we change the excitation wavelength across a, uh, uh, a range of wavelengths and collect the emission at a particular wavelength. With both of these, you end up with a spectrum. They tell you different things in terms of the information that they can give you. You can change the, uh, let's look at an emission scans. So this is the typical thing we're looking at. If you're running a fluorescence emission, uh, you often have already collected the absorption spectrum. So you have an idea of what wavelength to use to excite the sample, somewhere where the sample absorbs strongly. Um, and then the start and stop refers to the wavelengths from which we're going to collect the emission. You want to make sure that the start wavelength is at least 10 nanometers greater than the excitation. This helps protect the detector. Uh, the PMT is very sensitive. We don't want a lot of light hitting the PMT. Our excitation source is very bright. Uh, and so if our scan is going to overlap with our excitation source, we get a lot of light impinging on the detector, and that's bad for the detector. The stop wavelength, um, uh, this is something where if you have a well-defined sample, you know where the spectrum should be, you can set this up. If you don't know uh, where the spectrum will be, you can set this, uh, it says the range is out to 1100 nanometers. Uh, the scan control, this is how fast the data are collected. Uh, it's a scan rate in nanometers per minute. Right now we're at a medium uh, with an average averaging time at each wavelength of 0.1 seconds. Fast goes 1200 nanometers per minute. Slow is 120 nanometers per minute. Medium is typical, but it depends on the type of data that you're needing. Uh, if you need some really nice data for research project, you may want to slow it down. If you just need some quick data, you can go fast. And so another thing you'll want to look at are the slit widths. These are something that you want to, you may need to change depending on your sample. Uh, if the sample is too bright, that is that the emission is so strong that the spectrum uh, maybe sort of flatlines at the top, you can close down these slits uh, make them make them more narrow so that less light is hitting the sample and less light is hitting to the detector. On the other hand, if you're having trouble obtaining a spectrum, maybe there's not enough light reaching the sample, you can make these uh, slits larger or you know things like that. These other things uh, we typically don't um, change too much. You may want to think about overlaying your spectra on top of each other. The way that this operates when this isn't checkbox is that there will be different windows that pop up for each spectrum. And that's fine. So that's our setup. You can zero out the instrument when there's nothing in there. Uh, so we'll have a zero here. You should always collect a background spectrum if you're going to be doing quantitative work. 
that background spectrum is going to be the solvent that you're using. And to run a sample, you, you'll click start. It'll ask you for a sample name. You click OK, and it'll run. 